Hello students, now we reached chapter 19. The topic is spectrophotometers. So far, we have learned the principles of UV visible spectrophotometry. Okay, but now in this chapter, we are going to uh, concern with the uh, uh, practical aspect, the technical aspects of uh, spectrophotometers. Okay, okay, let's start. The front page of this chapter uh, shows a um, important example called cavity ring down spectroscopy. Okay, this is not a uh, uh, commonly used uh, technique for detecting very low concentration of a species, but I think it is very promising technique. Okay, let's start. You know the laser. Okay, you will learn laser soon. Or you you have a laser and uh, especially the tunable laser um, ordinarily you know, laser is not tunable it uh, only generates uh, more chromatic light okay but there are uh, the tunable lasers like a dye laser okay? anyway you take this tunable laser over a short wavelength range and then you send into this cavity you know, this is cavity at uh, two ends of this cavity, there is, there are the two mirrors, M1 and M2, and M1 and M2 are highly uh, reflective. Okay, that means, you know, here, the, uh, inside the mirror, the light uh, bounces back, back and forth. Okay, it travels uh, into uh, in this cavity. Okay, but this mirror one, uh, the reflection uh, coefficient is almost one. And in the meantime, uh, the uh, this mirror M2, its reflectivity is also very high, but not uh, one, but it is uh, 99.98 reflection. Okay, so only 0.02% uh, of light beam is uh, passing through this mirror too, and is detected by uh, this detector. Mm -hmm. And then let's uh, you know, inject uh, your compound of interest into this cavity, okay? And then you send this laser beam, okay? And then you scan, uh, for example, uh, the uh, wavelengths within this, this short uh, range, okay? And let's assume you now uh, turn on this uh, tunable laser, and then light, you know, inside the cavity, it uh, bounce back and forth okay, many times but okay and then now you turn off this tunable laser okay uh, since a, although light is not uh, what provided anymore but since the, the light already inside this cavity okay and then it back and forth and then uh, since some portion although it's a small is leaking through this mirror too. Eventually, inside the, um, the cavity, um, laser, uh, the light beam intensity decreases. Okay, so you with this detector, you monitor the intensity decrease as a function of time. Okay, let's look at uh, this figure uh, B. Uh, oh yeah, this figure, and here. Uh, this x axis is time, yeah, very short. Okay, so uh, that means that light intensity inside the uh, uh, cavity decreases very rapidly, and y axis is intensity. Okay, now you uh, measure yeah, the 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 what the laser intensity inside uh, the cavity without without a company of your interest, and then so uh, without absorber. Okay, you got absorber. It since um, the inside the light intensity uh, is not uh, being absorbed, so it, the decrease in intensity is rather slow, like that. Okay, without absorber, uh, this is a black line. But when you have your compound inside the cavity, and then that uh, compound absorbs light. Okay, although the concentration is very low, that doesn't matter. Okay it absorbs the light intensity and then intensity decrease is much faster okay like that 
Okay, yeah. So what what uh, would happen? Okay, so you can. Uh, so after you measure, actually you measure two times, and then you can subtract out uh, to uh, what um, separate the absorbance yeah, uh, within without uh, the absorber, and then with this one uh, you can what the differentiate the absorbance difference by you know 10 to minus 6. Okay, this is very small amount, small yeah, small number. Okay. This small difference hmm, cannot be distinguished by ordinary uh, spectral photometer, but with this laser. Yeah? Why? Why is so uh, uh, you know sensitively differentiated this uh, small uh, difference? That's why you see. Although you turn up the laser, the light already inside this cavity back and forth many times. Okay, how many times? A lot of times. Maybe more than thousand times. Okay, until. It, it decays out, okay? Yeah. That's why, so it back and forth, and then it, it, it uh, this light is absorbed by uh, the, uh, the your compound inside, yeah? Although the concentration is quite low, and then well, you can still distinguish, you know, very nicely distinguish, all right? So this one, uh, this is the actual uh, spectrum, okay, within uh, this uh, wave number range, okay, there are you know very distinct, uh, you know, uh, several peaks, okay. But this one, this peak is due to the uh, carbon dioxide. But here, carbon mass number is uh, 13. But this peak yeah, is due to the CO2. Carbon mass number is 12. And then look at that. This amount is correspond to absorbance uh, uh, difference by 10 to minus 6 right? is extremely you know, uh, small number okay yeah with this way you can differentiate even isotopes okay isotopes of gases uh, such as carbon dioxide methane ammonia hydrogen sulfide and hydrofluoric acid and form aldehyde okay and or oh, this ethylene, okay, yeah. So you have to uh, uh, pay attention to the uh, this wave number, you know, difference. Yeah, this one, yeah, here, here to there, the wave number difference is only what less than <coughs> one uh, wave number, uh, one reciprocal centimeter. Yeah, that is a very very small change. So, but here still you can differentiate in, yeah. It is only possible by this tunable laser. Okay, tunable laser you know, scans over a very short, you know, this uh, wavelength uh, range, but it is um, very monochromatic. So even this small difference can be very clearly distinguished. Okay, that's the beauty of this laser. All right, and uh, what uh, does this uh, spectrum uh, stand for? Right. This was taken from uh, a patient on uh, no breath. Okay. Ah, uh, by the way, one thing. So, what was the effective path length hmm? <coughs> inside this cavity? Although cavity is not very long, but since it's uh, no bounce back and forth, okay, and maybe the effective path length, yeah, path length uh, is nearly can be nearly. 20 kilometers, okay? 20 kilometers. Can you imagine that? Okay, yeah. And then uh, it has been applied to detect the uh, um, the patients with an ulcer, also, okay. And here, the areas of this, uh, you know, this uh, the area share ratio of these these two peaks, yeah, this one and that one, indicates. Um, or the human or a person have an ulcer or not okay well uh, from the study a patient with uh, uh, infected with uh, helicobacter pylori okay and then this ratio of this area uh, to this one uh, is uh, is high okay is high mm -hmm. is increased by uh, 
let's see, one to five percent. But uh, the ordinary person uh, who doesn't, who don't have, you know, the the helicobacter uh, pylori, and then this area ratio is within uh, 0.1%. Okay, so by measuring uh, this uh, the area ratio, so uh, you can uh, diagonalize whether uh, that person has a ulcer or not. Okay, yeah, this is uh, uh, you know one of applications of spectroscopy. Okay, in this case, this is uh, uh, you know actually vibration is uh, the rotational uh, spectra within the vibrational uh, you know energy levels. Okay, this is all rotational. Then. So with only this very uh, high resolution laser, uh, it is possible to obtain uh, this kind of spectrum. All right. Okay. Let's move on. So here is the outline of this uh, uh, chapter. Okay? So we are uh, generally dealing with uh, spectrophotometers. Okay. So you know spectrophotometers have uh, several important parts. First one are lamps and lasers. Okay. Yeah, without a lamp or laser, yeah, they, they are a light source. Okay, without a light source, you know, it's impossible to do any spectroscopy, and uh, you know the, the ordinary spectrophotometers have monochromators. Okay, it is it's a uh, it's a 단색 화장 chip. Okay, but the laser <laughs> laser beams are already monochromatic, so you don't need these monochromators. But uh, ordinary lamps, uh, for example, you know, tungsten lamp, uh, general lamp, or deuterium lamp, those lamps, uh, you know, they uh, generate a continuous um, or spectrum. So you have to use monochromators to select, yeah, select the, the uh, uh, wavelengths, uh, you know, with uh, within certain uh, bandwidth. Okay, you will see soon. And also, you know, the uh, the light is detected by, you know, several types of detectors. Okay, mm -hmm. there are uh, you know, several different types of detectors for UV visible range or in IR range. Okay, and also, you know, the, the you can apply this spectral uh, photometry um, as a optical sensors. Okay, you will see soon, and usually uh, the Fiber optics is used as optical sensors, okay? and then as a very very important technique yeah, of spectroscopy is uh, one of them is FTIR, Fourier Transform Infrared uh, Spectral Spectroscopy, or uh, such a spectrometer is called FT Fourier Transform uh, what Infrared Spectrophotometer. Uh, Okay, that is very important and okay? very very popular technique to obtain the vibration spectrum in uh, what the IR range. Okay, and also you know dealing with noise. Hmm? Noise means uh, a kind of uh, a fluctuation. Okay, and uh, our environment itself has a lot of noises. So noise we don't need. So. Uh, you 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 have to know how to deal with the noise. Yeah? You will learn the uh, the kinds of noise and the techniques to um, what reduce the noise. Okay. Okay. This is the uh, uh, general let's see uh, a schematic diagram of two uh, spectral photometers. Yeah. One is. Uh, single beam spectrophotometer and the other one is a double beam or it is uh, is not here um, double beam spectrophotometer okay what's the difference the single beam spectrophotometer uses only one beam yeah beam path is only one okay here you, know, you put light source here and then this light is uh, in a specific uh, wavelength is uh, selected by this monochromator and then here, uh, the light and in a pass through this one, the monochromator, whose intensity is p0, and then it passes through the sample, okay, and then the transmitted light, yeah, whose intensity p is detected, okay, 
That's the uh, basic concept of a single beam. You know, beam is a beam pass is also only one. All right? Yeah. And uh, you know, this one is easy to construct. Okay. Yeah. And uh, but it has a very important flaw. Okay. Important disadvantage. Uh, since you know the, the blank solution itself also absorbs a certain uh, you know the the uh, what the light okay so the blank absorbance should be uh, subtracted from the uh, you know, sample absorb absorption spectrum okay and light source you know, itself you know this uh, light intensity is not a uh, linear as a function of wavelengths okay and also mm, the light source is intensity, you know, is fluctuate, okay, and it may change with time, okay. So, with this single beam spectral photometer, you have to do twice the experiment: one for the uh, uh, blank solution and the other one for the sample, okay, solution, and then you have to subtract out, and okay? and what if there is, is uh, you know. A small change between uh, between the, uh, uh, the the exchange time. Okay, so the single beam spectrophotometer is a uh, very uh, it's also a good technique, but it has some uh, you know a flaw. Okay, in the meantime, this double beam spectrophotometer don't uh, have uh, such a problem because here. Light source scanning monochromator here. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's the same as here, but here you put uh, the mirror here, mirror, not two mirror, mirrors, one here and the other one here. And this one, this uh, mirror is a rotating mirror. Uh, it is, you know, the, the, the motor is attached to this uh, mirror, okay, and then uh, when uh, the, the mirror side is here. And then this light now moves, is reflected toward you know the another mirror, and then reflected here, and then pass through this reference cubit, and then reflect here, and then reflect uh, by this mirror, and then uh, goes to detector, okay? And but when this mirror is, is this one is rotates, and then it can pass through this mirror. And, and directly goes to the sample cubet, okay? And then here again, uh, through this mirror to detector, okay? So, by changing, by rotating this mirror, that this mirror, half of it, uh, it is mirror and half of it is uh, simple, simply there is nothing, okay? Only this one, half of it is mirror, okay? And simple rotating, yeah? part of the beam, you know, pass through the sample cubet and part of the beam now reflected from this mirror and pass through this reference cubet okay and then here you detect the signal okay and then automatically you detect the difference between p0 and p okay and then you can get the spectrum yeah the beauty of this double beam uh, instrument is that you don't need to do the experiment twice you simply prepare the reference, the blank sample, and the real sample, okay, and put inside the in the, uh, in, inside the spectrophotometer, okay, yeah. But uh, this instrument is not easy to co uh, construct, okay, and also uh, much more expensive than uh, this one. This optical arrangement is very uh, uh, you know complicated, okay. Here is here, uh, you can see. <laughs> You can appreciate the double beam, uh, you know, spectral photometer here. Let's see. Now you have the ultraviolet lamp here, okay, and also a visible lamp, okay. Now sometimes you know, this uh, very expensive spectral photometer uh, have uh, two light sources, okay. For the UV uh, range spectrum, uh, you only have you can uh, use only ultraviolet lamp. Or for the visible range spectrum, you can uh, turn on this visible lamp, usually tungsten lamp. This is usually deuterium lamp or a uh, xenon lamp. Okay, and then it is, uh, uh, you know, here is the grating. 
then uh, this beam you know the, the monochromatic light pass through the slit you know actually uh, this is creating one this is the uh, you know, actual monochromator you know uh, it is called the Cherny tunnel time monochromator and through this entrance slit and then here uh, it is a mirror the concave mirror and then here is the grating in bounce back and then eventually here it this is axis slit and then this is mirror and then here you look at that now this is the uh, uh, you know mirror you know connected to the uh, motor okay but it's a uh, half of it it is mirror and half of it is empty and nothing okay sometimes so by rotating uh, this mirror you know, the, the beam is directly passed through uh, this part or reflected by this mirror and when it passes through simply uh, it is goes to the sample uh, reference cell and then if it is bounced back and then it uh, it, it passed through this uh, sample position and then it is uh, detected here in this case photo multiplier tube okay this is actual, uh, you know, picture. Okay, as you see, it has very, very uh, complicated structure. Okay. Okay. Let's first consider, you know, the uh, lamps and lasers you know, as a uh, constituent of a spectrophotometer. You know? They are light sources. Okay. Usually, you know, for visible range. People use tungsten lamp. You know, tungsten lamp is very simple lamp, and one of the beauty of this tungsten lamp is stability. You see, stability. It it has you know excellent stability with time. Okay, and then it's a spectroscope. Uh, uh, spectral characteristic is given here. Okay, this uh, blue uh, blue curve is a uh, light intensity is a function of wavelength. Okay, here it has very little uh, intensity in in, in this uh, near UV range, but entering this uh, this uh, uh, visible range uh, is the intensity increase, 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 and then it, it extends uh, to the uh, near IR range. Okay, so in this uh, uh, visible range uh, work, you can use only tungsten lamp. But what about the uh, uh, in this uh, UV range, you know, a lot of organic uh, compounds uh, takes white color. That means it doesn't have, they don't, don't have, uh, you know, absorption in visible range. But they, most of them have a uh, absorption in uh, this uh, UV range. So in such cases, in such cases, you need to have another lamp that generates UV light. Yeah, one of the uh, most uh, frequently used lamp is a deuterium lamp. Okay, this one. But deuterium lamp, it uh, it generates UV uh, light between 200 and 400 nanometers. Okay, so it, it's quite good. But problem is that this uh, deuterium lamp uh, is not very stable. Okay, its intensity is not very stable. Yeah, so ne you need to be very careful. So. When you use a double beam spectrophotometer, no problem, okay? But when you use the single beam spectrophotometer, you know, set by this uh, uh, deuterium lamp, so you need to do your experiment very rapidly, okay? You have to shorten the time between your sample and reference measurement, okay? All right, and then now move to the uh, laser. Okay, laser, you know, laser is very, very uh, important, uh, you know, the light source. Yeah. And uh, you know the developer of, of laser, mm, I think you know, two Nobel prizes were awarded yeah, to laser. Mm. Here, mm, you have to you know this one. You have to you know to understand the properties of laser. You know this is very very important. It has at least five you know properties you know only to laser. Okay. Okay. What is the uh, full name for laser? Yeah? That, that is also very important. Yeah? Laser means light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Okay, to generate laser, you need another light. Okay, yeah? that's the you know the laser. 
What are properties of laser? First, it is highly monochromatic, okay? That means one wavelength only. It generates only one wavelength. Not, not absolutely, you know, the single wavelength, but, you know, the bandwidth of a laser is extremely small. Yeah, so it can be considered as, as monochromatic, all right? For example, three micrometer laser hmm, has bandwidth of 10 to minus 14 to 10 to minus 8 micrometer, okay? Wow, this is, you know, amazingly, uh, you know, narrow bandwidth, okay? Very, very narrow. Okay? And also, most lasers are very bright, yeah? extremely bright, okay? Because it generates only one wavelength, yeah? So, it has high power at one wavelength, yeah? So, this is another uh, characteristic. Yeah? Even, you know, your uh, uh, diode laser, yeah? Uh, you know, it laser pointer, yeah? That generates also laser, okay? That's very small laser. But the power is very strong. So, never, never look at with your naked eyes directly, you know, the, the diode, your... Uh, what diode laser, yeah, power point, power point, you know, the laser beam is also very strong, okay. And yeah, another characteristic is the laser beam is highly collimated, okay. That means it generates uh, uh, the laser beam doesn't uh, doesn't disperse uh, as it travels, okay. Yeah, let me take an example. Now you take uh, uh, the laser and then you uh, what hmm? send it to to the moon, right? you know, <laughs> from the Earth uh, to the moon. The distance is very large, but still, you know, you can see the laser image, okay, on the on the moon. It is that is uh, called collimation, okay. It is uh, laser is highly collimated, okay. Yeah, that's the uh, also. Uh, you know the, the property of laser, and then another property is that uh, uh, polarized. Yeah? You may not, uh, uh, you know, familiar with this uh, concept of polarization. In this case, in in, uh, in optics, polarization means that you know, you know every electromagnetic radiation has a electric field. Okay, but in ordinary in light, the electric field oscillates in every direction, but the laser beam, the electric field oscillates in one plane. Okay, one plane. That's very important. Okay, only one plane. So to make in ordinary light, uh, you know, the uh, polarized, you need to have a special crystal. Okay, after uh, you know passing through the special crystal. Then the light is uh, polarized, okay. But laser beam, you don't need to do that. Okay, laser beam itself is polarized already, okay. And also you know, the last uh, property is the coherent. Okay? Coherent is a very important technique, uh, important property, which means that you know, laser beam is uh, they are photons. Okay, the photons you know, oscillate. Okay, electric field oscillate, but you know they are. Uh, each photon oscillate in phase with each other in phase. That is called coherent. Okay, coherent. But uh, for the ordinary, uh, you know, the spectroscopy, you don't need, you know, this coherent properties. Okay, this property has been utilized for other purposes. Okay? And these five uh, properties uh, makes laser. You know, spectroscopy very very uh, useful okay and a lot of work has been done using laser you know without the laser you know modern technology many of the modern uh, you know technologies are not possible okay but there are some disadvantages of laser first it is expensive you know? <laughs> laser uh, spectrophotometer is very expensive and highly high maintenance you know price is needed and uh, limited wavelengths okay ah one of the uh, this advantage of a laser beam is that you know you cannot scan, or you can scan within only very limited range. Okay, laser beam um, mostly you know generate a monochromatic light, but one laser you know uh, spectral 
photometer generates several, uh, you know, the uh, wavelengths. Okay, but that is they are not continuous. Okay, so yeah, limited. It has limited wavelengths. Okay.